Every heartbeat begins with an electrical promise, a signal born in the atria, traveling down a carefully designed pathway, ensuring that the heart contracts in perfect sequence. Most of the time, this system works flawlessly, beat after beat, hour after hour, day after day. But sometimes, the message doesn't make it through. And when that happens, the rhythm begins to change. This is where second degree AV block begins. In second degree atrioventricular block, the heart's electrical system becomes unreliable. Some impulses travel normally from the atria to the ventricles, but others fail along the way. On the ECG, this failure becomes visible. You'll see a P wave, clear and confident, representing atrial depolarization. But then, nothing follows. No QRS complex, no ventricular contraction, no pulse from that beat. The atria speak, but the ventricles never hear the message. This is not a complete block, not yet. The heart is still functioning, still trying to communicate, but something in the pathway is beginning to break down. And this breakdown does not happen in just one way. Second degree AV block exists in two distinct forms. And understanding the difference between them is one of the most important skills in ECG interpretation. Because while one type often behaves gently, the other can become deadly. The two types are type one, also known as Venkebach, and type two, known as Mobitz type two. At first glance, both show the same basic feature. Some P waves are not followed by QRS complexes, but beyond that single similarity, they are fundamentally different rhythms with different causes, different risks, and very different implications for the patient. Let's start with type one or Wenkebach, second degree AV block. Type one second degree AV block occurs within the AV node. To appreciate what that means, remember this. The AV node normally slows conduction on purpose. That delay, allows the ventricles enough time to fill with blood before they contract. It's a protective pause, but in Venkabach, that pause begins to stretch. Each electrical impulse from the atria takes slightly longer to pass through the AV node than the impulse before it. The delay grows gradually, progressively, predictably, and the ECG reflects this perfectly. On a rhythm strip, you'll see a normal P wave followed by a QRS complex with a measurable PR interval. Then the next beat comes. The PR interval is a little longer. Then the next beat, even longer. Beat by beat, the PR interval stretches out until finally a P wave appears, but the AV node fails to conduct it. No QRS complex follows. The beat is dropped. This pattern is not random. It's rhythmic. It's logical. It's almost polite. The heart gives you multiple warnings before it fails to conduct. That's why Venkabach is often described as a block that announces itself. Venkabach is often considered benign because this block occurs inside the AV node. It is often influenced by reversible factors. You may see Venkabach during sleep, in young, healthy individuals, in trained athletes, or in situations with increased vagal tone. It can also be caused by medications that slow AV nodal conduction. In many cases, patients are completely asymptomatic. The heart pauses briefly, then resets, and the cycle begins again. But even though Venkabach is usually benign, it should never be ignored. Because recognizing this pattern is how you learn to distinguish delay from danger. And that distinction becomes critical when the block no longer occurs in the AV node. Because not all second-degree AV blocks give you time. Not all blocks stretch the PR interval and politely warn you before dropping a beat. Some blocks remain silent calm and convincing until they suddenly fail. And that brings us to Mobitz type two, a rhythm that looks stable, but isn't. In second degree AV block or in Mobitz type two, the problem does not live in the AV node. It lies below it. In the heart's most critical electrical highway, the Hisperkinje system. This system is designed for one thing above all else, reliability. It delivers electrical impulses to the ventricles with speed, precision, and consistency. So when this system begins to fail, the heart does not slow down gently. It breaks. On the ECG, Mobitz type two is deceptive. At first glance, it looks reassuring. P waves appear regularly. PR intervals remain unchanged. QRS complexes follow normally. Everything appears organized, predictable, 
stable. Compare this to Venkabach. In Venkabach, the PR interval stretches. It tells you a story. It warns you that conduction is weakening. Mobitz type 2 tells you nothing. Then, without warning, a P wave appears. The atria depolarize. The signal travels downward and, and then silence. No QRS complex, no ventricular contraction. No effective heartbeat. The signal simply disappears. This is not gradual fatigue. This is sudden conduction failure. And this unpredictability is what makes Mobitz type 2 dangerous. There is no pattern to anticipate. No warning sign to prepare for. One beat conducts. The next does not. The ventricles are left waiting. And cardiac output drops instantly. With each dropped beat, blood flow to the brain decreases. With longer pauses, syncope becomes possible. And with progression, sudden cardiac death enters the conversation. Let's stop and compare these two rhythms one final time. Wenkebox says, I'm slowing down. Pay attention. Mobitz type 2 says, everything is fine, until it isn't. Wenkebox is delay. Mobitz type 2 is disruption. One is a tired messenger. The other is a broken wire. Because Mobitz type 2 arises from the his Purkinje system, it usually reflects structural disease. This may include fibrosis, ischemia, or degeneration of the conduction system. This is not a temporary imbalance. This is damage, and damaged conduction pathways do not recover with rest or time. They worsen. Over time, dropped beats become more frequent. Pauses become longer. Ventricular escape rhythms may fail, and eventually conduction may stop entirely. This is how Monitz type 2 converts into a complete heart block, and patients may collapse without warning. Cardiac output may fall to zero. This is not a theoretical risk. This is why Mobitz type 2 is never ignored. A patient with Mobitz type 2 may feel completely normal until the moment they lose consciousness. That's why guidelines recommend permanent pacemaker placement even in asymptomatic patients. A pacemaker does not wait for failure. It prevents it. It guarantees ventricular activation. It eliminates unpredictable pauses. It protects against sudden progression to complete heart block. In Mobitz type 2, Pacing is not aggressive. It is life-saving. Second-degree AV block means the heart's message does not always reach its destination. But how it fails tells you everything. Venkabach is delayed conduction. Mobitz type 2 is failed conduction. One gives you time, the other demands action. And recognizing that difference is what transforms ECG interpretation. From pattern recognition into clinical judgment. If you found this explanation helpful, make sure to hit the like button. It truly supports the channel. Leave a comment below if you have questions, want clarification, or have ideas for future ECG topics. I do my best to read and respond to as many comments as possible. Make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on because upcoming videos will dive even deeper into ECG interpretation and life-threatening arrhythmias. Until then, keep reading the ECG, Keep questioning the rhythm and never ignore a dropped beat.